Oh, Spencer here. Coming at you with another video. Today we have got the Marvels Marvel Legends Infinity Series from the Build a Figure Collection Marvels Rhino Wave Heroes for Hire Misty Knight. Ooh. What do we think about this character? Meh. <laughs> Honestly, I was aware of her prior to the Netflix shows and didn't really care much for her in the comics. But I do really like what she's brought to the Netflix shows and yeah, I do really, really enjoy her in that series. Well, all in them series because she's crossed over a few. So yeah, if you haven't watched the Marvel Netflix shows, go watch them. They're pretty solid. I'm sad that they've been cancelled now because I was really enjoying all of them. Anyway, back to this one. I'm going to do apologise. Let's have a quick look at the packaging and then we'll get this bad girl out and see how good she really is. So as we've already established, you can see from the front of the packaging, you do have the nice window so you can see the figure inside, along with the Build a Figure Collection Marvel's Rhino there, the Marvel logo there, the Marvel Legends Infinite Series there, and the Heroes for Hire in multiple languages down there, and the little kind of Hasbro logo down there. Hey, you Nothing on the very top there. On this side, you can see a picture of Misty in some nice, cool comic art. See, I kind of like this. You can see the full cybernetic arm. That would have been... Whoops. That would have been so much... Whoa. That would have been so much cooler. And on this side, we have the Ghost Rider because we used the package twice. On the bottom of the package, you can see some obligatory legal jargon. Then on the back of the packaging, you can see the... Two heroes for hire, along with the rest of the figures in the wave, we have already done Chameleon, Ghost Rider, Craven, White Tiger, now we're in her, two more. So excited. And here is that zoom in for anyone who would like to pause and read their bio. Okay, so let's get this figure out of the packaging and see how good she really is. Okay, so here we have Misty out of the packaging, and what do we think? Honestly, Nah, you know, it's, they've done some nice things here, but nah. So, well, let's point out the obviously annoying thing first. In order to complete this bath, you will get not one, but two torsos. Because she also comes with a torso the exact same as White Tiger. <sighs> very, very frustrating. Hasbro. But I suppose they could have always just made one an exclusive and not done a single bath part, which I think they've done after this wave rather than giving us two. Because <laughs> who needs two rhino torsos? That being said, she only really comes with other two other accessories per se. She comes with a pistol and the holster. Now I believe the holster might be removable if you really work with it and shimmy it down or up or something. I am not going to be taking that off in this review because I don't want to stretch it, I don't want to damage it, and I don't know how easy it's going to be. The other accessory she comes with is the pistol, which is a nice gold-like Magnum 44 by the looks of it. There's a slight problem with it, and we'll have a close-up look at that now to establish what that problem is. Okay, who can see the problem off the bat with the pistol? Anyone? Hmm? Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? 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 <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, ridiculously warped. I think she was literally like sitting on it in the packaging. So the curvature of her form has warped it around this. Bit frustrating. Apart from that though, all in all, it's actually pretty nice. There is some solid sculpt in there. It's not like super amazing, but there is some in there. No, I've even done like a little bit of an indentation for the barrel. There you, go. you can even see there's some bullets in the actual chambers there, which is actually some nice deal with detail. Quite surprised we've done that, but then they've just skipped the trigger. <laughs> yeah, I suppose it's all normal. It just needs to like warm it up, straighten it out. It'll be all right. It's just annoying they have to do it with every single weapon. Sure, Craven. Now she can only get this in the one hand, and it does fit in there really nicely. The other hand is a fist, so we can't put it in that one. And she even has weapon storage, so it can fit in her humongous gun holster. So having a quick look at the actual figure itself, 
the head sculpt is nice. The afro is very well done. It's a separate piece which has been glued onto the rest of the head. The paint apps on the earrings is a bit weird because they're kind of brown inside them. Which basically means her flesh pokes through the earrings. <laughs> but the loops is okay. Lipstick is okay. The only problem is them eyes. She's got a bit of a lazy eye. Now, when Glenn Webb reviewed this, he even did an updated video to redo those eyes because it was a really big problem and it really bugged him. Don't know if I'll bother because, quite frankly, she's just not a main character for me. There is also some paint trim around the actual zip on the buckles and the straps going around for her gun holster, so to speak, or ammo holster. And that's the oh, and then the final bit of paint is on the belt buckle. That's the end of the paint. There's nothing else throughout the rest of the figure. The hand is a solid brown. The other hand is solid gold. The holster is a solid brown, and the legs are solid red. With a marbleization effect in there. I don't know why they've done a marbleization effect on like supposed to be a jumpsuit. The holster's okay, um, and it's nice enough that we've got it. It's just it's huge. It's absolutely huge. So I don't know how I feel about it. Now, the robot hand is very, very cool. The sculpt there is really quite nice. So I do really quite like that. Just wish maybe a couple of alternative hands or some open fists or something. Now, I'm not 100% sure on the comics how accurately I remember this, but I believe she lost her arm in a Stark accident. So it was actually Tony Stark that gave her the replacement arm. Which is different. I'm not going to say anything more than that to other incarnations. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I could be wrong. I generally can't remember. I that that's what I do remember. I don't know how accurate that is. Do you know? I'm just going to put this in here now. That's the articulation, and I'm trying to stand up ready for the pose. But I, I always seem to have the hardest trouble getting female characters stand. Now, to me, it's because basically the ratchets that go into the foot. They're two, they're either there or there. So you've got that angle or that angle. There's no like flat in between. And that a bit in between is too loose. So she leans back to that or leans forward to that. So I <laughs> can't get them to stand. It's really frustrating. You just kind of lean and pivot and do all kinds of stuff to just to get them stand up straight. It's absolutely insanity. Okay, articulation. Now, the head is just on a ball, so there's no actual hinge there, so you just have the pivot from that. So you can look down that much, up that much, pivot left, pivot right, and rotate around 360 degrees. They've actually used a separate plastic for the, the flesh there. I didn't actually realise that when I was doing the close-up. I apologise. Okay, articulation. So, I didn't actually realize when I was doing the close up, but if there is actually the flesh going to the head is actually a separate plastic. So, there is no hinge there, so it's just on a ball. So, you can go forward that much, back that much, pivot from there to there, and can rotate around 360 degrees. Shoulders are on very stiff ratchet joints. Shoulders on ball discs, they can go around 360 degrees, and they can go out on very stiff ratchet joints all the way to there. She has a no bicep rotation, a rotation at the elbow, and a hinge, very stiff again, but can do better than 90. But again, the more you go round, the less you get. Wrist can rotate around 360 degrees and can hinge from there to there. This wrist is exactly the same. A diaphragm joint, so she can go forward only that much, back only that much, no pivot worth speaking of and can really tightly rotate around 360 degrees. No waist cut, teacup hips, can do a Spartan with this leg all the way back, this leg all the way forward of that, so that's very impressive, do really like that. Uh, reversing that though, the holster doesn't really get away but it does kind of bounce up and looks a bit more ugly. Can do a split of only that, has an upper thigh rotation 360 degrees, double bend in the knee, no boot rotation and an ankle point from there to there and an ankle pivot from there to there. As the late Glenn Webb used to say, utilizing those ankle rockers, this is the first possible split she can do with both feet firmly on the ground. Okay, size comparison time. Misty stands to the top of her head. 
just over six inch tall, just over just about 50 and a half centimeters to the top of an afro, but six and three quarter inches tall, which is about 17, just over 17 centimeters. Okay, so here we have her with some other figures using some standard body molds. We have Kid Nova using a teenage male body, White Tiger, teenage female body, Half Point Wolverine, Peter and Spider Man, Bucky Cat. Jewel using a different type of female adult body. They are slightly different. Jewel seems to have a slightly wider waist and the upper arm seems to be different. Personally, I prefer Misty Knights because I like them hinges, you get a better range. Jewel's ones, they're a little bit more restricted. Craven for the uh, bulkier adult male body. Venom for the even bulkier male adult body. And of course, Colossus for the huge one. Okay, final thoughts. Would I recommend this figure? Honestly, if you're not a fan of the character, you're not trying to collect the wave, then yeah, I'd say probably an easy pass. While this figure does have some cool aspects, those ankles are driving me insane trying to fire them to get a stand. And, I don't know, just something about this character is a bit blah for me. It's not someone I'd, like, dire to have in a collection. I haven't said that I did get one of these um, to customise for my Netflix Misty Knight. So, I don't know, we'll see. We shall see. But, you know, there's some solid sculpt there and the paint works pretty clean apart from the eyes. So I think if you really do want to figure then yeah, this is a nice representation of her. I've just been thinking this costume uh, she's wearing it reminds me of something like out of uh, an anime movie or like something that that woman who are in the Lupin movies. What was her name? I can't think what her name was. But yeah, it reminds me of like, something like that. But anyway, guys, I hope you did like this video. If you did, please like, comment and subscribe. And stay tuned for the next one, which will be Superior Venom. We're almost there, and I'm really excited. Can you tell? Oh. Anyway, I'm going to catch you in that next video. <laughs> See ya.